Hi everyone, and welcome to Math 8 BCPS TV Style. I'm Mr. Parker, and I'll be your host as we work through today's lesson, which is all about the Pythagorean Theorem. Finally! And I'm wearing a Desmos shirt because Desmos is awesome, and I love their graphing calculator. So why study the Pythagorean Theorem? The Pythagorean Theorem is one of the most important theorems in all of geometry. It involves right triangles and right angles, so it is used in construction to make buildings upright and square. And right triangles are also the basis of a lot of future math that you'll learn, the trigonometry trifecta. Today's lesson will cover these objectives, which are the same as week eight of the Math 8 BCPS remote learning packet, which is the week of May 25th, Memorial Day. Students will understand a proof of the Pythagorean theorem and find missing lengths in the right triangle by applying the Pythagorean theorem. Our first objective is to understand a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. To accomplish this objective, we will work with a lot of right triangles and squares before we get to what the Pythagorean theorem actually states. So let's think about it. Here is a picture of some right triangles. All of the angles that appear to be right angles are right angles. That is, they measure 90 degrees. Can you find the total area of the shaded triangles? It's okay if you don't have a complete calculation yet, but did you have a strategy? Let's hear what Kayla said about how she found the area. To find the area of the pink, I calculated the pink using squares or rectangles. If I put this one here, I know that this side is 3 and this side is 4. So if I put that on top of it, these two sides are 3 and these two are 4. So if I multiply 3 times 4, I get 12 and this one has an area of 12. So then I do the same with this, 3 and 4. And then I put that here, and I multiply 3 times 4, and that's 12. And then I add 12 and 12, and I get 24. Thanks, Kayla. There's another way that you could have found the area of the shaded triangles, and that's by looking at the whole square as a 7 by 7 square, which has an area of 49, and then subtracting the inside square, which has an area of 5 times 5, or 25, and then you would have gotten 49 minus 25, which is 24 square units. I love the multiple ways that you can solve problems in math. So let's look at a different general triangle with different lengths. For our purposes, we'll call them length A, B, and C, where A and B are two sides of the right triangle, and C is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And any, we said before that any four congruent right triangles can be arranged to make two squares, a larger square and a square in the center, which has a length of C. So because each right triangle is half of a rectangle, we can, like Kayla did, rearrange our triangles to make rectangles. So I'm going to pull that piece over there and that piece over there. And what we are have left is a new area of the larger square, which is uncovered by these two squares. So we have a square with a side length of A, which gives us an area of A squared. And we have a side with a length B, and that square gives us an area of B squared. And that area is equal to the original area of the white square, which had an area of C squared in our original picture. So can we use these pictures to find the length of C? The key is to see that the area in the of the square in the middle of the left picture, right here, is the same as the sum of this area plus this area over on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna need to do is rearrange our picture on the left so that it looks like the picture on the right, and then think about what are the lengths that are involved here? Where are the 12s and 5s now? So here we have a square that is, has an area of C, and that should have the same area as the two squares that are still, still have the orange scribbles in them. Looking at the picture on the left, I can see that this triangle has a side of 12, so that is why there's a red 12 right here. And then the other square, or 
the other rectangle, has a side of 5 on the bottom. Now let's see what happens to that 12 and 5 now that we've got those squares there. That 12 is the same as the length of that white square, and that 5 is the same as the length of that white square on the right-hand side there. So we have two squares whose areas are 12 squared and 5 squared, and remember, that should be the same as the area of C squared. So knowing all that, we can put that all together to figure out what the area is equal to. So 12 squared plus 5 squared should be the same thing as c squared. So we're going to write an equation that says that. And I can use the exponents there. 12 squared is 144, 5 squared is 25, and 124, or I'm sorry, 144 plus 25 is 169. And now I need to think, 169 is the area of that square. So how can I figure out what the length of a side is? Well, if you know your perfect squares, that's one way. Uh, another way would be to take the square root, which we will talk a little bit more in, about in a minute. Um, or we can just kind of guess and check. I know 10 squared is 100. Uh, I can try 11 squared, which is 121. 12 squared is 144, which is what we got for uh, our previous expression. And 13 squared is 169. So we know that each side length there, that missing side length, needs to be 13. Our second objective is to find the missing lengths in a right triangle by applying the Pythagorean theorem. So we just learned about why the Pythagorean theorem is true. Um, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about what exactly it is, what it means, and how we can use it to help us solve some math problems. Let's think about it. Which side is longer, AC or DF? How do you know? If you said AC, you are correct. Both triangles have a leg of 12, but ABC's other leg has a length of 9, and DEF's other leg has a length of 5. Because the Pythagorean theorem multiplies and adds these positive numbers, the hypotenuse of ABC must be longer. Before we apply the Pythagorean theorem, let's talk about a little vocabulary. In the Think About It, I referred to the legs and hypotenuse of the triangle. These are words that are only used with right triangles, where the legs are the two sides that form the 90 degree angle, and the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite of the 90 degree angle. In this case, side AC. The hypotenuse will always be the longest side of the right triangle, and this is because of the Pythagorean theorem, which states that in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the sum the square of the hypotenuse. In symbols, what we can say is that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now, it is really important to note that this only works for right triangles. So let's find the length of segment AC from the think about it, which is the hypotenuse. We can use the Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. And I know that because there is a 90 degree angle. So the Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle, that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. It doesn't matter which one I substitute in for a and which value I substitute in for b because of the commutative property of addition, which says that if I add two numbers, 5 plus 6, say, that's the same as 6 plus 5. So our order doesn't matter as long as they are giving us both legs. We'll see an example where they give us a hypotenuse in a few minutes. So. I am going to substitute in 9 for A and 12 for B, and then I'm going to solve this equation for C. What that means is I need to simplify the left-hand side by squaring 9 and squaring 12 to get 81 and 144. Add those two together, which gives me 225. And now I want to find out what the value of C is. Previously, I said that if you knew your squares or if you had a calculator, you could guess and check, um, but we want to find a more direct route. So what we can do is we can take the square root of both sides. Now, you have to be a little careful here. When I take the square root of something, there is a positive square root and a negative square root. In this case, though, since we are talking about a distance, we do not need to worry about the negative because distance is always positive. So the length will always be a positive 
and in this case the square root of 225 is 15 and I am only looking at positive 15 even though negative 15 squared will also give me 225 because we are talking about a length so let's look at here let's try to find the length of HI which is a leg we are allowed to use the Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle and I know that because of this symbol right down here, which is a right angle symbol. So I know I have a 90 degree angle in this triangle. I also know that across from the 90 degree angle will be the hypotenuse. So 10 is the hypotenuse. So when I use this Pythagorean theorem, which says that in a right triangle, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, I have a leg, which can be either a or b doesn't really matter because of the commutative property of addition. And I have c, which is 10. So I'm going to substitute in my values, 5 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared, though a squared plus 5 squared equals 10 squared would have worked just as well. And now I'm going to evaluate my exponents to get 25 and 100. Then I'm going to use the subtraction property of equality to get the b squared by itself because I'm trying to isolate my variable here. And when I subtract 25 from both sides of this equation, I get that b squared has to be equal to 75, which provides us a little bit of a conundrum because 75 is not a perfect square. I know that 8 squared is 64, which is kind of close. And I know that 9 squared is 81, which is kind of close, but a little over. Price is right rules. So I know that something that squared gives me 75 has to be a little bit more than 8, not quite 9. Uh, so we can use the square root. But whenever I take the square root of both sides of an equation, there are two numbers that I can square that give me 75, a positive number and a negative number. So when I write my next step, I write the plus or minus symbol, which is in front of the square root symbol. Um, but because this is a geometry problem and HI is a length, I know that it is not going to be a negative number. So I can ignore the negative possibility there. And then I'm going to use a calculator to get a decimal approximation. I already kind of mentally thought about it and said hmm, it should be between 8 and 9. And when I substitute it in the calculator, I get that it is approximately 8 and 66 hundredths. And you'll notice that my equal sign is a little wavy there. That's a fancy way of saying that this is an approximation. It is no longer an exact value because uh, when you substitute that square root of 75 and evaluate that in your calculator you'll see there's a lot of decimal places and i didn't want to put those decimal places in here so i just rounded to the nearest hundredths place uh and since it's no longer an exact answer i made some wavy lines let's try a few more let's find the length of segment a b the hypotenuse again pythagorean theorem applies how come because of that right angle that's absolutely correct a and B represent the sides of the legs, and in this case, it doesn't matter which is which because of the commutative property of addition. So I start with A squared plus B squared equals C squared because when I have a right triangle, that relationship applies. I'm going to substitute in my values, 4 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. Evaluate those exponents, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. Combine them together to get 41. And then again, I am going to take the square root of both sides, but because this is a length, I don't really need the negative. So I am going to just consider the positive square root of 41. 41, not a perfect square. Between 6 squared and 7 squared, 36 and 49. Uh, so I know it's going to be about halfway, maybe 6.5 or so, 6.4. OK, great. So we have found the missing side. And I can kind of confirm because I said earlier that the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a triangle. And in this case, 6 and 4 tenths is bigger than 5 and 6 and 4 tenths is bigger than 4. So we have the correct length. I'm sure you've been enjoying learning about the Pythagorean theorem. There's been a build up here for a few weeks. Uh, so I'm glad we're finally here and talking about it. But don't fret. The Pythagorean theorem will come back next week and we will talk more about it. So if you're missing it uh, during the week, that's OK. Know that another video that has the Pythagorean theorem in it is coming. So this is our last problem. Uh, in this case, we are trying to find the length of AC and AC is a leg. And I can tell that because here is my 90 degree symbol across from the 90 degree symbol is my hypotenuse which in this case is side a b with a length of 25. i'm going to substitute in my values into the pythagorean theorem 
which would give me 15 squared plus b squared equals 25 squared. Next up, evaluate those exponents. 15 squared is 225, 25 squared is 625, and now I need to get the b squared by itself. Subtraction property of equality says that I can subtract 225 from both sides, which leaves me with b squared equals 400. And in this case, I actually do know the square root of 400. I'm going to stick with the symbolism just so that you can see what's happening here. I am taking the square root of both sides. The square root of b squared is b. The square root of 400, there are two, a positive and a negative. But because this is a drawing and we're talking about lengths, I'm going to ignore the negative. And the square root of 400 actually turns out to be an integer. It is 20. So length AC is 20. Kind of makes sense because 20 is a leg and the hypotenuse is 25. So a quick check just to make sure that I didn't do something drastically wrong is to make sure that my legs are shorter than my hypotenuse. In this case, my legs are 15 and 20, both of which are shorter than 25. So I'm feeling pretty good about my answer. this week. Here's a picture, not from my life this week, but a really awesome thing that I found back in my uh, classroom days. This is a ladder that can adjust and you can make the height of the books as long as you want. And I included it this week because when you do word problems involving the Pythagorean theorem, there's going to be a ladder. So here's a nice little visual to go along with that. Stay safe this week and hope to see you here next week.